grace, how great a debtor. Daily I'm constrained to be. Let thy goodness like a fetter bind my wandering heart to thee. Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, Lord, take and seal it. Seal it for thy courts above. I used to just dislike that verse. You know why? Because I thought to myself, you know, whoever's writing that is just giving an excuse and a place for their heart to wander. They're just saying, my heart is prone to wander, and it's okay, and Lord, here's my, you know. Well, I was a young Christian at the time, and uh, uh, zealous and thought I could be holy, and then I began to realize as I began to grow in my faith how easy it is for my heart to wander. You know, how easy it is. And, and I began to identify now with the cry of his heart. Here's my heart, Lord, take and seal it. Seal it for thy courts above. I recognize my, my own just bent sometimes on this world. Well, you know, yeah, I do know. You know, you look back at the, at the, through the scriptures, and we find ourselves, how often have we found ourselves thinking in our minds sometimes about the children of Israel? How could you have ever doubted God? You just walked through the Red Sea. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, oh, oh, you got to, you mean you made the bitter water sweet? Okay, now have you got it? You figured it out now? Well, you've got manna from heaven? Wait a minute, there's water from a rock. You mean your shoes never wore out? And still, that struggle to trust Him. That's the Old Testament. Of course, we're smarter in the New Testament. And so here Jesus comes, heals the sick, raises the dead. Multitudes are gathered. Life is being coming. Children and people that are and captives are being set free. <coughs> And the next thing you know, they're hollering crucified. Mm -hmm. And how easy it is for us to forget what God has done. From where we've come from. And one of the reasons that it's good for us to take communion is it's a place of remembrance. Mm -hmm. You know, Peter wrote, he said, listen, I'm not sharing anything new with you. He's probably thinking about all of, you know, I know y'all want the new, fresh revelation, but the bottom line is we need to be reminded of what we've already been taught. And I'm reminded of a song by Rich Mullins. It's called Growing Young. And you know, it seems like when we come to the Lord, the next thing that happens is we get educated. We start getting smart. <coughs> and the smarter we get and the more theological we become, the more we start losing sight of the personal relationship aspect of the Lord. And then we find ourselves returning, like it says in Revelations, come back to your first love. <clears throat> Think about it. He said to that particular church, he says, you're doing all the right things. Man, you can discern false teachers. Man, you recognize false doctrines. You've got the smarts. You've got it figured out. But he said, I have this against you. You lost your passion. You've lost the personal aspect of relationship within. And I'm not saying the studious part of it isn't necessary. He tells Timothy, you know, um, be a workman that needs not be ashamed and, and, and to be solid in that which you're teaching to others. Therefore, you ensure salvation for yourself and others. I mean, he told them to be sure of what they were believing. But so often in the process of that, we lose the personal part of it. And so, and so as we consider that, you know, how easy it is and how often sometimes we forget where we have come from. As we look at, and I'm just going to share a couple passages just about the, the birth of Christ. And, and nothing none of us hadn't heard before, but just to remind us during the season. Do you know when Simeon saw... The, 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 the Christ and, and he saw the salvation of Israel and he began to prophesy he says this child is born this one that we all gather around and consider for Christmas this one that we see wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger this very one he said is born for the fall and rise of many 
and for a sign to be opposed. That same baby that the whole world begins to gather and this is the moment where we celebrate the, the Christ child in the manger. It says he was born to reveal the hearts of many. Think about the hearts that he revealed. John chapter 8. You know, he told the Pharisees. Think about this. You are of your father, the devil. You know why? You know why I know that? Because you want to do the deeds of your father. Now, what have we been looking at lately? We've been going through Galatians 5. The deeds of the flesh are evident. Which are? And he begins to go through this list. And then he says this. Now think about this. Gosh, my mind starts over flooding. Some of the scriptures we've already touched on. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, in the last days, difficult times will come. Because men will be lovers of self, lovers of pleasure, disobedient to parents. They'll be ungrateful. They'll be um, um, irreconcilable. They'll be... Uh, um, haters of good, and, and it says they'll be lovers of pleasure rather than, now think about this, and, and put these together, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, while holding to a form of godliness. Now think about that. Lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, all the while holding to a form of godliness. Now you look at the Pharisees again. They had the picture of God. They had the outside evidence that that person must love God. But their heart was bent on this world. And when Jesus looked at him, he said, Listen, guys, you're angry at me and you want to kill me. What does that mean? Their heart was being revealed. Here they were religious leaders and they had murder in their heart. They wanted to push him off a cliff. They wanted to stone him. Their hearts were being revealed. He said, listen, he wasn't saying, you're of your father, the devil, you're a bunch of... He was saying, guys, look. Look what's coming out of your heart. And you know what they began to say? Listen, we are Abraham's offspring. We're not born of fornication. We're born from Abraham. <clears throat> and then he says this. Now think about this. Think about... you got to... What was... Think about what Jesus was saying in the process of this. He said, if you were Abraham's offspring. They were Abraham's offspring. If you were Abraham's offspring, you would do the deeds of Abraham. What he was saying is you are not Abraham's offspring. Abraham was a man of faith long before he was circumcised in the flesh. It's those who are of faith who are the offsprings of Abraham. And by your deeds, you're showing that old flesh nature. And so, when we come here to, uh, look with me in Luke chapter 11. So just keeping in mind this same child, you know, <clears throat> And the last thing we shared last week, just the, the last springboard pushing forward, remember we said, who was the forerunner? John the Baptist. And what did John the Baptist come preaching? A message of repentance. Repent uh, and be baptized. And, and as the word of repentance began to cultivate in the hearts of the people, their eyes, spiritually, began to be opened to what? The revelation of Christ. Listen, we like to, and we all do it, we feel uncomfortable sometimes when the plow gets put into our heart. And that's why, listen, if you're unwilling for the plow to be set in, what's going to happen? We're going to accumulate for ourselves teachers that will make us feel good. And you know what, guys? It's easy to start pointing at everybody else. We all do it. Think about places and times in your life when you weren't ready to hear what needed to be said. You know what? I'll just go somewhere. I'll hang out with some friends that are going to make me feel comfortable. We've all done that. I've been in places where there were certain people that I knew that were going to tell me the truth. 
I'm not ready for that right now. But I'll tell you what, if you love the Lord, you're going to begin to seek them out. Mm -hmm. But there are those who don't have a love for the truth. They don't want God getting in their business. They put on the cloak out externally, but they don't want God getting in here dealing with idolatry. Mm -hmm. Dealing with those things that we've become comfortable with, that we've justified. And it's much easier. Listen, if I am an adulterer, it's a lot easier for me to be in a place that doesn't talk about adultery. Mm -hmm. If I've got adultery in my heart, I don't want to be in a place that begins to expose it. But I'll tell you what, John chapter 3, we'll read. Remember? Uh, God so loved the world. He sent His only Son. It also says those that love the light will come to the light that their deeds might be exposed. At some point, we all begin, if we love the Lord, you begin to, I know I don't want to hear this, but I know I need to hear that right. Mm -hmm. I, need to be, I need to get back with them. Mm -hmm. I, need to, I need to get back with that, you know, friend of mine that knows me better than everybody else, and he's, I know what he's going to say, and you know what? It's time. Mm -hmm. I can't do this anymore. Mm -hmm. you know? And so, in Luke chapter 11, and look with me in... Uh, Verse 27. While Jesus was saying these things, one of the women in the crowd raised her voice and said to him, Blessed is the womb that bare you and the breast at which you nursed. Now think about that. Before this, Jesus is preaching and teaching. Have you ever been excited about the word in such a way you just wanted to... <laughs> Yes, thank you, Lord. And I can see the word is finding place in this woman's heart. She's excited and she cries out a blessing. Blessed is the womb that bore you. Why? Because her heart's being touched by this person. Blessed are the breast that nursed you. Now think about this Christmas season. Listen. It's not just necessarily Catholicism. But so often we just wrap around this person <coughs> Mary. Now listen, yes, there was a favor upon her life. She was picked out. Mm -hmm. And the scripture says she was righteous in regard to her walk with the Lord. And another thing that says, it says, she believed the promise that the angel spoke to her. You know what that immediately when I read that, one of the things that been kind of a seed in my mind when talk about Abraham, it calls Abraham, Abraham the believer. Mm -hmm. I just want it to be said, Andy the believer. Mm -hmm. And yet, here's my heart, Lord, is prone to wander, I'm prone to doubt you. Mm -hmm. I want to tell you, I don't know, I know everybody here, but I don't know you, like all your stories of life, obviously. I know mine. And if there's anybody in this room that should not, ever, ever, ever doubt the faithfulness of God. It is me. <clears throat> Lord, why does my heart doubt you? Why am I afraid of the unknown? Lord, I want to be the believer. That, I don't know that there's a higher testimony than to be called and he's a believer. He believed God. And so Mary believed God. And because of that, the favor of God rests upon us. But what we're going to see, the same favor, the same blessing in many ways that was upon Mary's life is available to you. Because God's no respecter of persons. And he says... And here's what Jesus says. It says, but he said, on the contrary. So now think about that. Now remember, as you're meditating scripture, it's about stopping and thinking about, considering, what if you were amongst that crowd and the excitement of hearing the word, you're, wa you're being washed by the word of God and, and that life that comes from that. And this lady in the crowd cries out, blessed is the womb that bore you and the, and the breast that nursed you. And all of a sudden, the process there, Jesus says, on the contrary. 
On the contrary. Blessed are those who hear the word of God. And obey it. Now one of the things, once we step forward into the new year, we're going to start focusing on that. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and obey it. Well, now you're getting into works. Don't put that on me. Don't put that on me. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and obey it. Listen. As you begin to say it, you begin to say it all through the word. He said, listen, that's the blessing. And the same favor that Mary found. Do you know why Mary found it? Because she loved God with all of her heart. She loved her neighbors herself. She trusted and believed the promise that God had made. Look with me. In... Um, um, we're in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And I want to think about for a moment <coughs> blessings that were upon Mary's life. Think about this. As the mother of the Christ. What are some of the things about Mary that were unique to her life that would have been different even from Mary Magdalene or from John, a beloved disciple. Well, the same one that gave birth to the Christ nurtured him, looked into his eyes. You know, one of the things I know that Rebecca would share with me, <coughs> part of the connection between the baby and the child is in the process of nursing. And you're looking right there. That baby's close to your heart. You're looking into the face and the eyes. That baby's seeing you. And, and I remember times when the baby would touch the chin as it's nursing, you know, stuff like that. And so there's this devotion, and I don't know, you know, in a family, you know, but there's something in the nurturing of a mother. And, and imagine that, that, that nurturing of Christ. And then think about this. He says, his banner over me is love. The same blessing that she had as a mother, he says, I want you to know me intimately. As the eyes of a servant looks to the hand of their master, the eyes of the mistress to the hand of her maid, so do our eyes look to you. That relationship, that communion, that intimacy that is shared between a mother and a child. What if the Lord was saying to you, I want the same for you. Listen, I'm grateful for all that you've memorized. And you can define doctrine. And, and I wish, and, and listen, there's so many parts to the body, guys, and we all need to hear those different parts. And, and I love, just like Jesus spoke about the scribe there, the scribe can pull from the old and the new and he brings them together. I've got friends that are studied in the Word of God in regard to seminary and things. And they can, I go, wow, how did they bring all those pieces together? I just know my part is simplicity and focuses on relational. I just know that's what God aims at at my heart all the time. And what I don't know he says, listen, the greater part is sitting at my feet. The greater part is looking into my face. The greater part is learning to be still. So, Corinthians, look with me in chapter 2, in verse um, 7. But we speak God's wisdom in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God predestined before the ages to our glory, the wisdom which none of the rulers of this age had understood. For if they had understood it, they would have they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But just as is written, things which have, eye has not seen, 
nor his ear heard, and which has not entered into the heart of man all that God has prepared for those who love him. Do you know what's interesting is that many times, how many times have y'all found this, those of you who are mothers have found this with your children, they just say, uh, it's like uh, they're not quite ready sometimes to tell dad yet. <laughs> but they kind of tell you <laughs> that secret thing, you know. And it might be good, it might not be good. But, but let's start with mom, mom and then we'll work toward dad. But you think about the secret things sometimes that are shared between a mother's heart and a child's heart. And he says, listen, that same blessing. You know what it says about Mary? It says, as she would hear this Christ, she would ponder in her mind. She would just think about the things he was talking about. Listen, what the Lord said to you, there's a secret part that I want to reveal to you. That I has not seen, nor has ear heard. And you know what? There are things about God in your life as wonderful as they are, they're not meant for everybody else. Listen, y'all know me. I am a Facebook and machine. I mean, I video this, I take a picture of that, I do this, I'm at Bible studies, and I do Randy. But I will say this, there are times when I know this doesn't need to be video. This is a God moment. And something will tell me, leave that alone. There are times of intimacy that are meant for you and God. It's the secret place of the Lord. And you know what he says? I meant that for you. It's not for everybody else. It's for you. The same blessing that was upon Mary is given to you. He says, I'm no respecter of persons. What God is aiming at is relationship. The next thing I'll point out in regard to some things that Paul said, especially in Galatians and in Corinthians and other places, in regard to the church. You know what he says? This is interesting. Don't you find? He says, he says, I bore you. I'm again in labor with you. He says, now this is Paul speaking. I nursed you as a mother nurses her child. All of us, the joy of being a part of something God's doing in someone else's life. We all have the opportunity to bear someone else in regard to what begins in their heart and life by the investment and the willingness to give. And you know what? Those labor pains, when Paul says, is this labor in vain? He begins to talk about the struggle of labor. So often, and just like in today's society, you know, I don't want to go through that. Are you willing to go through that with other people? Sometimes it's hard to be patient, to walk alongside, and to love someone enough to endure alongside them. But then in the birthing process, also the nurturing process. Paul was a man who said, listen, I care for you as a mother cares for her own child. Do you know that God says, the same blessing that was upon Mary, you have the opportunity to be a part of that if you'll be willing to step into that place of service and surrender to me. I'm not talking about standing behind a pulpit. I'm talking about the day-to-day -day life of spending time with people and being willing to endure with them, to nurse them along, to walk with them, give them space. Do you want that? Let me finish with this passage so we can do the communion and do some other things. Uh, Matthew chapter 12. And uh, you know what interest another thing about the blessing of Mary that comes to mind and you'll know this from, uh, from John 2. Remember who they came to when they were out of wine? 
Mary. No, it came to Mary. You know? And, and how often, when you, when you want to know something about Josh, you go to Carla. What do you think, you know? When you want to know about, you know, Matt or Ronnie, all right, I'm thinking about this. You think, Matt, you know, something about that relationship that came to Jesus' mother. Listen, do you think you could talk to Jesus? Do you think you could get him to kind of maybe help us here? In the same way, he says, listen, you have, in the same way Mary did, an open heaven to me. I hear you. Our Father, prayer, communion, ask me. Ask me. In uh, Matthew 12, now, let me just give you a little story behind the scripture. When I came to the Lord, I know it wasn't immediately, but it wasn't too, too far beyond immediately. I can't tell you how or why. or I just started sharing the word. I mean, I was called upon to teach at the school and to give Bible studies and to do something in youth group. And it just happens not that quickly, but pretty much that quickly. You know, maybe within a year, it just started happening without the pursuit of it. And so, of course, by the time I graduated from high school, everybody across the board said, because I didn't know what I wanted to do, you need to major in speech. That's what you need to know, do. You need to go and major in speech, and you're gonna, that's going to be the easiest class in the world for you. Got to school, got to the University of Liberty, and uh, majored in speech. That was a nightmare. I dropped it after the first season. I mean, that was, I thought, what am I doing? And I sweat, and I sweat in my clothes, and just, you know, because I had to get up and talk about how a camera works, or, or the parts of a flower, or, you know, giving speeches on just these things, and God's grace wasn't on it. And I learned something in my life personally. I'm actually not a public speaker. When it comes to the Word, He just, and I know it when it's happening, He doesn't. But I'm going to tell you what, getting away from this, I'm a lost cause. And I remember we had these other speeches, and literally I'd get up in front of everybody, and I'm just hot and sweaty and just totally, and I, had a, I was barely passing the class before our final. We were all, we had the liberty to pick whatever topic we wanted. And of course everybody picked the things that were interesting to them, whatever hobby or what they enjoyed. I'm going to write to the word. Uh, this is my chance to just challenge everybody, mm -hmm. and I got into the Word, and, and I could just tell the difference mm -hmm. when I was sharing about this. And it says in verse 44, While he was still speaking to the crowd, behold, his mother and brothers were standing outside seeking to speak to him. Someone said to him, Behold, your mother and your brothers are standing outside seeking to speak to you. But Jesus answered the one who was telling him and said, who is my mother and who are my brothers? And stretching out his hand toward his disciples, he said, Behold, my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of my Father who is in heaven, he is my brother and sister and mother. Now think about this. Again, as you consider this passage, there's a crowd, and so his brothers are coming in and saying, Listen, Mom wants you. Let's you know, come out here. We're waiting for you. And he looks at the group. So, so imagine you're sitting there and you see this happen. And he looks at all of, all of us here and he says, Who are my mother and my brother and my sister? Now listen. One, obviously, you know, within Catholicism, the worship of Mary. But even within our traditions. Now listen, yes, we need to esteem everybody. And sometimes we don't esteem people enough. But I will say this. When Jesus looked at it, he said, listen, my family are those who do my will. Because you know what? His eyes, even born as this child in this flesh and bone, the seed of God within the womb of woman, born out, not being touched by sin. This very one 
He wasn't tied to the natural. He said, my family are those who are of the faith of Abraham. Those who do the deeds of Abraham. My family are those who do the will of my Father. And that's one of the things, as we springboard forward, we're going to begin to look at what is the will of the Father. Don't you think that's important? Mm -hmm. yeah. What does it mean in Scripture? What does it say? Does he, does he just throw that out there and say, well, you'll figure it out? <laughs> or does he begin to say, this is the will of the Father? And then we have to come back to those places. Wow. Maybe my definition and his definition sometimes are a little different. Mm -hmm. Show me the word. Show me what you say. And so as we take this communion and begin to share in this moment, first of all, remember, he said, Peter, so I speak to you by way of remember. As we share this time, it's a time to remember where you've come from. And I want you to give thought tonight. Do you remember the time when you were born again? Now listen, for some of us it wasn't a moment like on <coughs> February 3rd. It wasn't for me. I can't give you a time and date where boom, everything changed. But I can look back at a time in my life when God was beginning to move and change was beginning to happen. There was something that was started. And I can't define a time and a place, but I can go back and remember things about my heart that began to look toward Him. Go back to that place. Lord, am I as in love with you today as I was then? Or today have I gotten distracted? And let me tell you what, the, what to do if you've gotten distracted. Repent. Lord, forgive me. I can see it. And I can sense it in my heart. And I know you don't need me to roll on the ground for three days. And you don't need me to run through a glass window. But I recognize it. And I come to life. And Lord, as I take from this cup and as I eat from this bread, I remember the sacrifice that it took in order for this passionate, reckless, raging fury that we call the love of God, I recognize what it took to redeem me and to bring me into oneness with you. And I receive tonight the blessing that came upon the life of Mary. I receive intimacy with you. Lord, I receive, I want to receive, I want to hear the secrets of your heart. Lord, I want again to surrender myself to that place of service to nurture others. Lord, again tonight, I want that clear avenue of prayer. Just like when Jesus' mother came to him and said, listen, here's their need. Would you meet it? Do that in my heart tonight as I take this communion.